Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part 5 of constructors. I'm going to open up my website here to javacjava.com, click on the little pop-out menu, select the Java OOP tutorials. Scroll down to Constructors Part 5. This tutorial will build on the box class from my This Keyword Part 2 tutorial. The length, width, height, uh, sorry, the length, height, and width of a box should allow for fractional dimensions. In this tutorial, I will expand on the concept of constructor overloading by creating a constructor with double primitive data type parameters. Okay, let's come down here, right click, or I'm sorry, left click, hold down the mouse button on the down arrow to highlight all this stuff. Okay, hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Move the browser off screen. Um, I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. If you don't have it, you can right click on your desktop, select new shortcut, type in CMD, click next and finish, right? That'll create one for you. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. First thing I'm going to do is type in Java C. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly prior to continuing this tutorial. We'll type in CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells us to go to the root. Then MD, make directory Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. CD Java. Now I'm going to make another directory, and I'm just going to call this... Um, <clears throat> constructor 5 and then I'm on a notepad structure5.java okay constructor5.java is our Java source code file also known as our compilation unit enter to create that <clears throat> okay and then control V to paste or you can right click and select paste okay um, everything is pretty much the same as the um, this keyword part 2 tutorial. We'll have created a new constructor down here. So this is our default constructor, right? And this is our first constructor. This was our second constructor. And here's my brand new one. It's just like the second constructor, only instead of int stuff, I've got double stuff. So it has the same number of parameters here, only I've got double length d, double height d, double width D, and then the string unit of measurement, which we can reuse from other ones there. Now in order to make this work, I had to come up here and, and initialize three new instance variables, um, setting them all equal to zero on the double value, right? Don't forget the D to indicate a D for the double value there. I like to put it in there. It's not necessarily, it's like optional. But anyway, so length D, height D, and width D, all of double primitive data types. And they're private, so they're well encapsulated. Let's go ahead and scroll back down here. So um, I'm setting the this, of course, back to the this operator. This is um, this is a keyword that just basically has a reference to the current object that you're working with, right? So this dot length d will actually change our instance variable length d up here, right? The length that's coming, length d that's coming in right here, this is the parameter length d. Okay, so we're setting all of those values here. So that's basically up here what we do up here with that right there. So um, then we'll come back up here to the constructor5 class, and in the main method entry point up here, we're going to create a whole new box object, reference variable e. And then we do new box. And what, what cues this to be different than, say, this one up here is this 4.5 right here. That will tell the, um, the Java compiler there that basically, the, or the Java runtime, but basically it'll tell it that, that, you know, let's go ahead and initialize the constructor for our new box object with. You know, the first parameter has to equal a double type because we've put this in here. Now, even though I didn't put the D on there, I did that on purpose, and so I'm just going to leave that off, right? That will tell, the, tell it to go ahead, and we want to go down here and um, initialize this constructor right here 
because this is the only one that can possibly match it. Even though these other two are int data types, if you remember my video on type promotion, right? Because one of these is a double, everything else will get promoted up anyway. So the, the ints can definitely fit into the double and, and go right in there, right? No problem. And so it comes down here and picks this new constructor here. And then we'll create our, our box object and assign it to the reference variable E here. And now we can say the volume of box E is E dot, and then let's invoke the calculate volume double method. And that's a new one I've put in there, plus E dot get unit of measurement. Okay, let's come down here to the last thing that I added in here, and that's a method to get the volume of the box, right? And we're gonna be returning a double type, so I created a whole new method called calculate volume double to return back length D times height D times width D, right? And so that's basically where we're at there. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Let's type in Java C and then Java. Okay, so the, we got our first three things, which are basically what we expected from the last, if you watched the last tutorial. The volume of box um, B is plus our calculate volume, 100 cubic inches. Right, and we set that one in the, in using the setter methods here, 10, 2, and 5. 10 times 2 is 20, times 5 is 100. And then our next box, right, 96 cubic inches. And our next box, 5,670 cubic centimeters, right? And then down here, the volume of box E is 112.5 cubic inches, which is what this equals right here, 4.5 times 5 times 5, okay? Um, so yeah, so basically what we've got is I went ahead and kept expanding this, this box class out by adding new features to it. And of course, you know, a box dimension should be fractional units too. We should allow for that as well. So by creating this new constructor, we're able to do that and not break any of our previous versions of this box class. So um, just before I leave you with my final thoughts down here, this uh, there is a much better way to do what I did down here rather than have two um, versions of the calculate volume. And that's what, what I'm gonna go into next, which is called method overloading. And it's very similar to, uh, to constructor overloading here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and I'll leave you with some final thoughts. So the ability to overload a constructor allows us to seamlessly expand our classes without breaking code that is already in use. You can have two constructors with the same number of, uh, all right. You can have two constructors with the same number of parameters as long as the data types for the parameters are different. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.